Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just to give you guys some channel updates, reviews that are coming. I've got the Cyberboard R4. Got this myself. I think it's the best typing experience that uh, I've used to date. It's expensive. It looks gorgeous. Um, it's one of those things that like, did I need to purchase that? No, but it's absolutely magnificent and I'm glad that I did. I've got a lot of the new Beastex mice coming. I've got the Max. I've got the uh, new 8K version of the normal size that will be competing with the Board Z version of the mouse that I have right here. Um, but overall, uh, just a lot of IEMs I got to catch up on. There are a lot of IEMs that I actually like. I think they'll be joining the list I have over there. Um, the Splendors. And the reason I have the Splendor so high right now is just because of that price point of entry. They sound absolutely amazing. The bass is fun, but tight and clean. Everything is just audible for a single dynamic driver. I think it's the best single DD uh, IEM that I've tried to date for gaming-related purposes. And again, just a tuning that's fun while being so damn good. Um, but I do have a lot of IEMs that I need to catch up on. But I want to get into the Zaopin Z2. I wanted to do this video in particular because I've tried a lot of things from MetKeys, but Zaopin is the brand that is just consistently giving me um, a run for the money for the higher tier items that are what we're accustomed to. The G Pro Super Light 2, the Razer uh, equivalents like the Dave. Um, but Zaopin's giving us things that are somewhat unique shape-wise. This is an interesting mouse, and I would most kind of link it to something along the lines of a G Pro Superlight, but an ergonomic version of it. And the reason I say that is because the click height is actually somewhat similar to the G Pro Superlight. In the hand, it actually ends up kind of feeling like that SteelSeries Prime mouse, that was one of my favorite ergonomic shapes. It's not something that would overtake my main ergonomic mice, the Smooth Touch Dave, the Vaxi Outset, um, but it's something that I had a lot of fun playing on. And I think if you're looking for an ergonomic, um, a very budget worthy option at $60, 4K, Nordic chips in this thing, I think it overall has the build quality, the performance to give the higher tiered items a run for their money. And I think if you're looking for kind of just a unique shape to play around with at a price of entry at $60, I think overall it's actually a pretty solid mouse. Getting to the overall build quality, the coating of the mouse reminds me a little bit of the Thorn. It does feel dry and grippy, but it has like this plasticky feel. It doesn't feel as pristine maybe as other mice, um, but it gets the job done and works as intended in terms of keeping the mouse fairly dry. I think the side buttons here actually feel good. There's just an ever so slight level of pre-travel. There's a little bit more post-travel than pre-travel on Mouse 4 and Mouse 5. And overall, just not a lot of sway when you hit Mouse 4 and Mouse 5 at the tops of the buttons, which a lot of mice, even mice from the big companies have. The scroll wheel feels nice. It has good uh, steps both forward and back. It is a TTC gold encoder. Mouse 3 is very spammable. And in terms of side flex on mouse one and mouse two, it's almost non-existent. Mouse one and mouse two, those TTC gold switches actually feel good. Um, not as clicky and responsive feeling as I would like, um, but they do actually feel quite good. And pre-travel is pretty minimal on mouse one and mouse two. And post-travel, there's just a bit of post-travel on mouse one and mouse two. You can see the bottom of the mouse. The default skates are PTFE. They actually aren't that bad. I would probably replace them for my own personal liking. You've got Bluetooth 2.4 here on the bottom of the mouse and DPI profile buttons. Overall, the shell is built like a tank. This thing is sturdy as hell. Does not flex at all in any direction that I push this thing, except on the bottom plate. But you're never going to feel that in game. Even when you are death gripping, that bottom plate should not be flexing on you at all. Sliding into performance, getting into a game of Apex. This was my last game testing the Z2 before this review. We almost dropped a 4K in Apex. And what I can say is the shape is quite appreciated. It feels good. Again, it's kind of like an ergonomic G Pro Superlight and maintains around that same size. So overall, with side buttons, main buttons that never felt mushy or any side flex, the overall performance between shape and buttons actually felt quite good. 
The mouse is 65 grams, and in Call of Duty Resurgence, it felt a little bit slower than I would like, but I've been using very small, very lightweight mice recently. Overall, in Apex Legends, despite some RF signal issues every once in a while, the performance of the mouse in 4K did feel quite good. Currently testing it on 3200 DPI and around 0.4 sensitivity. I had a good experience in Apex, and for $60, I just don't have much to complain about. Getting everything next to the Zaopin Z2, the thing, again, that it's going to feel closest to is the G Pro Superlight. In the hand, it's just not as high or ergonomic feeling as something like a Vaxi Outset, and it's not nearly as large and ergo feeling as something like a Smooth Touch Death Adder V3. I think in terms of ergonomic mice, those are still the two that are taking the cake for me. Uh, but the mouse does feel very good. And again, most, remini most reminiscent to um, a G Pro Superlight. When you really transition from one to the other, and it's going to depend on how big your hand is, but it feels quite G Pro Superlight-ish. It's just it has that ergo flair where instead of keeping that symmetrical tendency of the hump, you can see it almost... Um, dips down towards mouse two while maintaining that ergo flare upwards to the left and has a um, nice ergonomic groove on uh, the left side of the mouse. It does maintain a left side that feels somewhat like a G Pro. It's really going to be that flare from the butt of the mouse and those ergo tendencies up uh, through the mouse. It it feels really nice in hand. If you like the G Pro Superlight, I think it's an easy transition. And the reason why I refer to the um, SteelSeries mouse is because as you get towards the top of the mouse where my thumb rests and my index finger, I kind of just get that like pointed targeted feel with a nice ergo lock-in on this lower sitting ergo mouse compared to these two. It just feels really nice and, and targeted and pointed with my aim. That is really going to wrap it up for this one. I think it is a nice feeling mouse. I think for a long time, people have been asking for an ergonomic G Pro Superlight. This is the closest you're going to get. It's 65 grams. I wish it was around 55, but it does feel very well weight balanced and the performance felt good. It's just very hard to hate this thing when they're only asking for 60 bucks. Am I ready to discard all these other mice for the Zaopin Z2? Not really. It's not something that I can point to and say, this is the behemoth of ergonomic mice. Run out and buy this now. But damn, is it a very good budget ergonomic mouse that has the internals on paper uh, that should offer a damn good experience. I didn't have any issues in game this, other than a few RF signal feeling type issues. I haven't tried to update the firmware yet. Um, but overall performance, the shape, the feel, the build quality, I give it a thumbs up at a price point of 60 bucks. I think it's pretty damn fun and interesting. But that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. See you guys in the next review. Peace.